Welcome back everybody. Today we are looking at an investment property. And one of the things that I am doing, I'm going out there and I'm actively myself looking for an investment property. And I can go through a property in about 10, 15 minutes and determine is it worth buying or is it not worth buying? And I'm like, well, why can't other people do that? Even for their own homes. So we're gonna start off with the foundation, do a quick walk around, you're gonna knock out the roof, then we're gonna go down and check out the HVAC system, then we're gonna knock out the plumbing or electrical, whatever comes first. This property is only in the 2000s, so we probably won't have much problems with the plumbing and electrical, but you never know. And then we will work our way around there. So let's go check it out. Okay, so step one, foundation. Foundation can easily be looked at just by taking the time and walking around the exterior of the structure. And then you wanna be looking in between the freeze board and the brick here. And so you can see whenever we build our properties, the freeze board right here, um, they, we normally put them really flush together and if there's any significant movement you'll actually see the freeze board separate and sometimes you can stick your hand up in there so this is one of the first signs that your foundation can move, move that it can move also um, when you're looking at your foundation uh, i like to say signs of three so you can have one sign say the freeze board separate and you're like okay big deal and then you come around the corner right here and the brick and the framing of the garage right here it's it's not separated it's flush well that could have been just not installed properly so you need more than one sign so another sign is in between the framing of the garage and the uh, the brick those are easy spots to look and then also in between windows and the the siding whenever you have separation in those areas those are the first indicators that you might have issues one thing that is a common mistale with foundations is the driveway so you can see right here there's some pretty significant cracking across the driveway and if you have significant cracking of the driveway that has no indication on the performance of the foundation. So if your driveway is cracked, it just means that maybe the driveway surf suffered a drought or something. Driveways are typically only poured four inches and if you're lucky, six, but most of the time it's four. And your, and your slab foundation typically is 23 inches thick and in, on the perimeter. So, you know, you, the, if the driveway's cracking, it, it means nothing at all. And when I say separation in between the uh, brick and the window, I'm not talking something like this. This is gonna be common maintenance. What you normally see is it'll be like flush at the bottom here and then wider at the top, indicating that there's some sort of shift in the structure. So we don't see any signs of separation of any of the windows on the exterior. So that's kind of step one to evaluating the foundation. Okay, the next area with foundations is going to be on the interior. So you've done your exterior pass, now you're doing your interior. And you're going to be looking at stress points in the property, such as like corners of doors, corners of windows. Do the windows open easily? Do the doors open and close easily? Are they sticking? You know, are they closing by themselves? Again, there could be other indicators of the why that might have happened but typically what you're looking for are these 45 degree angle offshoot cracks. Can't get this in the camera. This way. <laughs> this way. So you're looking for 45 degree angle cracks indicating some sort of shift. Remember, anything straight is man-made. So you see the joint cracks that go straight up and down is man-made. Anything that is shooting off at weird jagged angles, that is nature at its best. Okay, I'm trying to get this shot with the roof on the backdrop, just showing that you can inspect it from the ground. So this is actually really cool. So we had a uh, 2008 property, and you can, I don't know if it shows how it shows up in the camera, but you can see the roof appears to be newer. So, you know, as an investor, as I walking up, and if I, even as an inspector, I wouldn't even jump on this roof. So if there is any repairs to be done, it's very little, very minor, something that most people can knock out themselves or hire someone to do it very cheaply. But how do I know the roof's newer? You just look 
at the neighbor's roof. And you can see all the discoloration over there. The shingles appear to be a little older. And then you can see we got nice and shiny shingles here. So I really don't need to cover it that much. That's how easy it is. Look at your neighbor's roof. How does that look? Look at your roof. How does that look? Does it look the same? Does it look old? And if it looks the same, then it's probably original, right? So if it's original, you got some money to put into it, depending on the age, I guess. But normally they start to go out in Texas, I'd say right about the 15 year mark where you're gonna start budgeting to really replace that thing. Okay, I think I misspoke a little bit. As an inspector, we do our best to get on every roof, depending on the steepness. If it's too steep, then uh, we will do inspect it from the ground underneath. And then also we'll let you know we inspected it from the ground just in case you wanna get a roofer out. Um, but as an inspector, we do our best to walk all roofs because you never know what you're gonna find. But I'm, what I was talking about before is as an investor, you know, if you're going in and looking at properties, people typically don't like you walking on the roof without putting in any offer. So I was saying, hey, you walk up, you're able to kind of see it just from the ground just for a second to determine how much money you're probably gonna to have to spend on the structure. So here's another view of the roof. Man, this one looks pretty good, nice and clean. Flashing looks real good, nice and painted. No real exposed fasteners, all the shingles look installed really well. And then this is what an older roof looks like. You can see some sort of patch over there. Oh, the laser pointer kind of reaches over there. And uh, shingles just look a little older, you know? A little bit of damage right there. That roof doesn't look bad. This might need a little TLC. You know, the flashing's a little crooked right there. Seal the satellites. And we gotta figure out what that patch is. I'm over there inspecting it, it's not even mine. <laughs> and I would say this pitch right here, uh, it's probably the steepest. I'm comfortable with walking, and I'm comfortable walking this one because uh, there's a valley right there. So if I slip for whatever reason, I can catch myself. That's really how you have to think when you're walking most roofs is, if I fall, uh, what am I gonna run into? Let's see what it looks like whenever I'm uh, walking it. Here, let's show you that. Look, your feet do stick to it, especially on a new roof. Ooh, you just gotta be gentle. It's a nice, steep roof. Nice and easy. Okay, moving on to the HVAC. You can actually typically do this uh, from the outside and inside of the attic, but say, as an investor, you typically can't open up attic spaces. I do, don't tell anybody. I'll just open up there, take, take a look real quick. But um, right here, you can actually just get a lot of information just by the outside condenser. So what are, how, what are some things that you can do to see if this unit's working without any tools at all? So the first off is, how does it sound? sounds pretty good you know the motor sounds nice and clean it not uh, there's no clanking the motor doesn't sound like it's working overworking also the next thing you can do is brush your hand across the top and is the air coming out hotter you know is it hotter than the environment around if it's not and it's blown out about the same temperature it might not be cooling properly the next thing too, depending on how long the unit's been running, you want to check the refrigeration lines. Does the fat line feel cold? Does the small line feel warm to the touch? Uh, this one feels slightly cold, but I did just turn it on, so we'll see how it feels in a little bit. And then also the age. You can determine the age of the unit on the label right here. I'm going to try to get to it right here. And typically they're the second two numbers of the serial. so. 09 and then the tonnage is in the model number numbers divisible by 12 so three ton 09 unit and it is and what type of freons in place and you can see as the 410a freon which is good sign if you have the r22 freon it's really expensive to repair or most people just replace it there i don't think they're even allowed to work on them uh, i don't know that rule maybe y'all can leave it in the comments so you know, really easy first look at the condenser right here. So what was next? We did the foundation, we did the roof as an investor point of view, 
you did we did the condenser on the outside we can look up in the coils real quick let's go do that let's go check out the coils okay up in the attic space here uh, so now you're going to start to see that we've had some problems in the past the pans rusted through the uh, the tapes pulled loose we have a lot of air leaks around the system so you oh and the downstairs filters are really dirty too over here so we know this unit needs some care is it at the end of the life no but it does need to be serviced so if you're trying to budget uh, for investment purposes this is something you're definitely going to run into uh, repairing here in the future sometimes it might require a part or two if it's been abused for I guess 11 years right so that moves on to the next item right here we have the water heater and uh, um, so we're gonna move on to the plumbing plumbing or electrical right uh, due to the age of the home the electrical is probably fine you can just look at the outside panel which I've seen a few times and tell that it's probably okay uh, you're not allowed to open it up as an investor when on your first go through uh, after you put in the offer I think you are legally allowed to open it don't quote me on that don't you know make make sure that you're allowed to do that but I believe any type of inspection is allowed during your option period and that includes you the buyer so next right here we got the water heater uh, whenever you see like these white marks typically means that they have some sort of sealant issue on the water heater so you're starting to see some light through there so water is making it through here you definitely want to take care of those because that can compromise the top of your tank um, I keep forgetting we're looking at this from the investor point of view so investor point of view real quick look right we're trying to knock this out in less than a minute so you're gonna look at the overall condition of the tank is it rusted is it corroded what do the fittings look like is there corrosion at the shutoffs which we do have a little bit of corrosion at the shutoff if I was an investor I'd probably replace the shutoff right away because I don't want issues down the line I want this property to sit and sit healthy um, also uh, the pan looks clean there's no rust or corrosion in the pan so I'd say overall this is a good uh, water heater and then let's look at the label right here oh brand new 2020 oh my goodness that's really nice so we got a we got a uh, AO Smith 2020 water heater 40 gallon so look at that so we got a brand new roof we got a brand new new roof and a brand new water heater on investment property that's looking pretty nice and we have PEX plumbing there are some known issues with PEX plumbing but there's known issues with every type of plumbing and honestly from my experience there's actually not that many problems with PEX plumbing all right um, let's uh, go look at one more thing and then we might stop this video okay, so I got Josh here uh, we're doing this investment property and of course outside of those five major components there is always something else that shows up on an investment property that you're going to need to fix. And that's why it's always good to get an inspection. So after your first quick walkthrough, I'm rambling a little bit, but <laughs> <laughs> so Josh found some stuff with the windows and uh, we're going to let him cover it. So uh, after my first walkthrough, I found that almost every single room had one or two windows leaking. Some of them pretty, uh, pretty significant leaks to the point where we got some microbial growth on the inside of the walls. And so uh, after coming inside, I went outside and saw that the, the caulking around the windows poorly installed, poorly maintained. Um, all the windows need to be resealed on the outside. So you can see we have a pretty significant leak here in this corner. And uh, I found uh, three windows that are actually actively wet today. We've had rain in this area in the past couple of days. So you get a little bit of blue showing in the corner and was verified with our moisture meter that it is actively wet uh, at three windows. So really the biggest thing on this property because uh, a lot of components are really good is to reseal these windows so you don't have any future water intrusion. Yeah, do you think this is a good investment property? Oh yeah, absolutely. Anytime you can get an investment property with a new roof, new water heater, uh, AC is only 10 years old, it just needs a tune up, uh, just a service, um, and your biggest issue is just some window leaks, uh, you got yourself a good property. Yeah. So there you go, that's a quick, not crazy organized uh, walkthrough on buying an investment property. So make sure you smash that like button. It costs you no money, you know, give me some, give me some love right there and help the algor algorithm make those inspectors pop up on people's YouTube stuff. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, that, that's a really good close. So make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and uh, catch us on the next one. We try to do it one video a week and I get a new camera. That's actually why I'm here with Josh is this camera, if you've ever noticed, there's like little scuffs and stuff. Uh, this one's uh, taking a beating through my uh, stucco inspection adventures. So yeah, subscribe. Catch us on the next one. See you. Bye.